Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Woman G's Stupid Scary Stories. Enjoy ghost stories with a little bit of humor thrown in there. Well, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give it a like if you like it. If you want to be notified, well, you have to hit that notification icon. And, you know, a little bell will ring and let you know when I post a story. Or when I'm going live with one. Now, once again, tonight I'll be reading from Connecticut Ghost Stories and Legends by Thomas D'Agostino and Arlene Nicholson, part of the Haunted America series. Tonight's story, Nineveh Falls. Let us begin. The legends and ghost stories of Killingworth rival many other towns that proclaim their land to be tainted with the supernatural. The area has an interesting historical account as to its settling by the white man. The area of Hamanasset, where a peaceful tribe that lived along the shores between the Agiquamic River and the Connecticut River, their sachem was known as Sebaquanch, the man that weeps. Uncas, the famous Mohegan sachem, married his daughter and thus inheriting the Hamanasset land. He then sold a generous parcel of real estate to George Fenwick Esquire of Saybrook. On November 26, 1669, Uncas sold the rest of the land to the residents of Killingworth. The remains of an Indian village are located about half a mile north of Route 80 near the junction of Roast Meat Hill Road and Wolf Meadow Road. Even the names of the roads provoke historical queries as to their origins. The village consists of several rock shelters where Indian artifacts have been discovered. A place called Nineveh Falls sits not too far from the village within the Killingworth Land Conservation Trust near Lake Hamanasset. The area has gone through many changes over the eras, but the legends never fade. Indian spirits, witches, and eternal love are some of the ingredients in the following small but potent narrative. Special thanks go to the Killingworth head librarian, Tammy Eustace, for supplying as much accurate information concerning the legends and haunts of Nineveh Falls as was available. It is with great excitement that I now relate these accounts that have made the falls one of the must-see places in Connecticut. The falls have a haunting legend concerning an Indian maiden who was given false news on the fate of her lover. Her betrothed was a warrior who went to battle with a promise of marrying her upon his return. Sometime after his departure, false news arrived of his death during combat. Heartbroken and distraught over the loss of her beloved, she made her way to the falls and in a state of depression and sorrow, threw herself into the rapids. The brave returned to find that his lover had leapt to her death. Feeling there was nothing else to live for, he decided to join her and jumped into the same rapids as she. Now, when the full moon casts a blanket of light upon the land, witnesses can see two ghostly figures walking along the edge of the falls, hand in hand, in eternal wedlock. There is another forlorn tale of a beautiful young woman who fell in love with a local farm boy. The young farmer was not only the sole provider and caretaker of the farm, but was also engrossed in the undertaking of looking after his aging mother. The story takes two turns from here. One is that the woman, though infatuated with the young man, knew that she would never entice him away from his mother and thus traversed the rocks to the cliffs of the falls and shot herself in the heart, falling into the torrents at the base of the falls. The next version is what the old timers will tell you when sitting around the country store, pot-bellied stove on a bitter winter afternoon. In this version, the young man did not care for the girl and resisted her affections for him. This caused the jilted lover to throw herself from the cliff into the rapids below. Either way, the result was the same, and the place has become known as Lover's Leap. Another legend associated with the area involves one of the early settlers' most feared entities, witches. Yes, even Killingworth has a history of those who are in league with the devil. 
These old hags were said to frequent the Nineveh and Chatfield hollow areas, brewing their concoctions and casting spells on unsuspecting undertakers passing by the wicked realm where they held consort with the most evil one. Two of these hags were Goody Wee and her daughter Betty Wee, who traveled back and forth from Killingworth to North Madison casting their spells on people for goods and profit. In a 19th century book called The History of Middlesex County, neighbors claimed that the wee witches had the power to enter their homes and cuddle their finest cream so it would not be churned into butter. Not a single villager had any misgivings that witches sculled about within the dark bowels of the river's edge. It is written that no farmer could pass by these malevolent hags without an assessment of goods from their carts. If they refused, the carts would mysteriously topple and all of their cargo would be lost. Ghosts also lurk in the woods around the falls. Who they actually are is probably forever lost to antiquity, but they have been blamed for many odious occurrences that have taken place in the area over the centuries. One such tragedy took place at the end of the 19th century when a woman was approaching the falls in her horse-drawn chase. Something supernatural suddenly spooked the steed and he started bucking ferociously before breaking into a sprint down the hill toward the bridge. The woman tried to pull the reins and halt the horse, but to no avail. With fire in the animal's eyes and a fear in his heart, he dashed straight through the wooden railing and off the bridge, sending Surrey and all into the river below. Needless to say, the woman and her mare did not survive the ghostly encounter. Tom Lenz, town historian, published a book called A Photographic History of Killingworth, in which some of the old photos and stories regarding the legends have been preserved for future generations to savor. If you decide to visit the falls, do not attempt to do so in the snow or ice, as the paths are steep and treacherous. Nineveh Falls can be viewed from Route 80 in Killingworth for those who wish not to traverse the trails. Now, you all know me. I don't always listen to the good advice given by those who write these books. They said, don't go in the winter when there's snow and ice. The falls are steep. I was like, fuck that shit. I'll put on some snowshoes. I'll be alright, right? Yeah, of course. Not thinking about the many people who have leapt to their deaths. So, we've been told that they've leapt to their deaths. How do we know that they leapt? Right? Once again, I do my little bit of research here. Digging, 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 digging. Trying to find the truth. I mean, I've been told that supernatural occurrences happen here quite often. So, of course, I went to see for myself. I wasn't going to wait for the summertime. You know, when I read the book, it was in the winter. So I'm like, ha, 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 let's go. It's about time to check this out. And check it out I did. In the snow. What just so happened the night before was a furious snowstorm. Left about two or three inches. So it wasn't really that furious. But it was furious enough that there was snow covered on the steep slopes of the falls. Which I went to go see. At night, of course, because I was told that in the light of the moon, you can see the spirits swoon. They didn't rhyme it like that, but, you know, I figured I would for entertainment purposes, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, give you guys a little bit of rhyming. But that's enough of that. It's enough of that. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. Went there. Moonlight. Nice night. Water. Running. Ice. Snow. On the ground. Accumulated. Two to three inches, like I told you. Slipped and fell, Pfft, busted my ass quite a few times. It was at this point I'm cursing myself out for not listening and not going when there was snow and ice. But I was already there, so there wasn't much I was going to do. You know, it's not like it was a five minute drive from where I lived. It's about a good half an hour, 45 fucking minutes. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was going to do what I was going to do, which was to investigate. Now, from the top of the falls, I could see the Native American couple walking along the river's edge, hand in hand, looking at each other lovingly. I was like, oh, that's cute. It's not a bad sight. Warms my heart. Warms my heart. But it was then, 
as I was watching this joyous moment that I saw something most terrible. The other woman, the one that they said leapt to her death because, you know, she couldn't have the man she wanted because he refused her advances. Well, I saw her ghost standing at the top falls. She was looking over them, sad, tears in her ghostly eyes. I could see them sparkling in the moonlight as they fell from her face. It was then that I noticed something most strange, a dark shadow behind her with eyes of red. It reached out, pushed her over the falls. She went tumbling down. I didn't hear a splash, obviously, because she was a ghost and shit, so there wasn't going to be a splash. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear splashes from ghosts, unless they want you to hear them splash. But I didn't hear her splash. I just saw her go flying off the falls. It was at that moment that this dark, shadowy entity with the red eyes saw me standing there. He probably saw me standing there before he pushed her off. But, you know, he made it known that he saw me standing there because then he looked over at me and he pointed his ghostly shadowy hand in my direction i looked at myself and looked around to see if maybe he was pointing at another ghost somewhere but he wasn't he was pointing at me i got a little nervous you know i'm thinking to myself what if he wants to shove me off the falls so i start to walk away from the falls at this point because i don't want to get pushed over the edge wouldn't be good for me at all you know what i'm saying so I make my way away from the edge of the falls. This thing is still looking at me the whole damn time. So I speak out. Hey, shadow thing. The fuck you looking at? Huh? You murderous being you? How dare you push that poor woman off the edge like that? That's fucked up. That's extremely fucked up. You demon. Yes, demon I am. <gasps> it spoke. Shit. What do you mean, demon you are? You are a demon? Damn. I was just saying that because that was a mean fucking thing to do. I mean, I call people demons sometimes when they do mean shit. I didn't really know you were a demon. Yes, I'm a demon. Razabal is my name. I have a proposal for you. Proposal for you? Me? I mean me, not you. Me. You, you have a proposal for me. I don't really think that I want to take your proposal, buddy. I know who you are. You know who I am. Who am I? You are Reese. Mitchell, ha <laughs> killer of Zadel. Wow. Word tra travels fast, huh? Yes, it does. The boss is looking for you. Told you to stay away from areas with demonic essence. You don't listen. So, I'm going to ask you nicely to come with me. Or, we can do this the hard way. The hard way? What, pray tell, is the hard way? good Razamul. The hard way is I throw your ass off this fucking falls, kill you, and then bring your soul back. Or you can just come back with me in physical form. Maybe the devil won't kill you, which I know he will because he's kind of pissed off. Zazel was his best fucking friend. Aren't you all his best friends? No, we're not all his fucking best friends. Makes you think that. We're all demons and shit. We all must be fucking Satan's best fucking friend. No, I'm not. I'm actually not his best friend at all. I don't like the guy. He gets on my fucking nerves. I can't stand him. Fucking red bastard. Well, you don't want him to hear you say that now, do you? It might not be too good for you, buddy. Won't he, like, damn you? I'm already damned. I'm a fucking demon. We're already damned. We can't be any more damned than we are. Shit. What do you think? It's like opposite day? He's gonna turn me into an angel? I'm gonna be mad about that shit? Fucking, they got wings and shit. Fly around in the light. Do all nice good stuff. Sometimes really evil things too. I mean, it depends on from which end you look at it. I mean, demons, angels, eh, they're all about the same. They all do fucked up shit. <laughs> they just serve different masters. Hey, look, I don't need a theology lesson here, buddy. I don't really care about this, that, and the other. Uh, let's hear your proposal. So, you know, since it's either you, you know, I come with you willingly and shit, or get tossed off this fucking cliff, which I'm not really trying to have that happen, uh, what do you propose? I'm, I'm open to 
listening to your suggestion, potentially. Well, I really don't think that you have much of a fucking choice. You know, I could just summon Satan here right now and he could deal with you himself. Or, you know, I can get some brownie points. I've been trying to get this new thing from Amazon.com and I need a few more bucks. He promised me a little bit of money and I can get what I want. Some LED light strips. I've got LED light strips that I'm not using. How about I give you the LED light strips and you just let me go? How about that? You know what I'm saying? And all's good, right? Yeah, you know, I don't get tossed off a cliff. My soul doesn't get snatched. I don't have to hear what Satan has to say. We don't have to talk to him. You get your fucking light strips. All is well. He didn't agree with that. He didn't agree with that at all. He was being a douche. And it's not like I would have given them to him really anyway. I mean, that would mean going home. It's not like he was going to let me leave by myself and go back to my house and shit. Like I was going to come back all the way up there with some fucking LED light strips for a demon. And I didn't want him coming to my house. You know what I'm saying? Either way, he said no. So I'm like, all right, look. What if I... There's nothing you're doing that's going to satisfy my request, which is come willingly or get tossed off the fucking cliff. I don't think you can fly. And last I checked, you're a human. and You don't have any fucking wings or a jetpack or anything of that nature that's going to let you float down to the bottom of these falls. It's a long fall down there. Trust me, I know. I'm the one that tossed that bitch off that shit hundreds of years ago. Yeah, she was upset. Her lover hated her, you know... Gave her a little one-two action. Then, the day after, he was like, Get out of my house. My mother needs care. And I don't have time for you. Thank you for the romp and the hay. But, good day. And she was heartbroken. Oh, God. You should have seen her face. She went up to the top of the falls, praying to God, asking God about why such terrible things happened. I guess God was kind of mad about her questioning him and shit. And... All of a sudden, this protective bubble that she had over herself was no longer there. I just so happened to be up at the falls, you know, hanging out, looking at the water, just drip down and shit, wishing I could partake in it, you know what I'm saying? It's not like we can feel water. We can't really feel much of anything except for pain and anger, suffering and shit. So, I threw her ass off. Threw her ass right off. I mean, she probably wanted to die anyway. I mean, she got played. Bad. It was terrible for her. Fun for me, watching her like go flying off, and she hit the bottom and cracked her head on some rocks and shit. She didn't die immediately. She didn't die immediately. You know what I mean? It took her like a few hours to expire. The whole time I'm like following her around, watching her and shit, kind of poking at her. <laughs> You're sick. I'm a fucking demon. It's not sick. This is what I do. It's what we all do. I mean, shit. For us, that's minimal. Minimal type of thing. Shit, you talking about me? What about the fucking angels? Have you heard of some of the shit they've done? Shit, they've destroyed whole fucking villages and cities and shit and fire and flood, chopping heads off with knives and swords. Yeah, you know what? I did have a run-in with some angels a long time ago, and you're right. They are some pretty brutal fucking things. Like, whew, it's terrible. But, you know, me and you, we're kind of like getting along here. So why can't we just like come to this little agreement that perhaps... I just give you those LED light strips that you really want, and you let me go. You know, pretend you never saw me. At all. Right? Ha! <laughs> Wouldn't that work? No? No. It's not gonna work. <clears throat> You're coming with me. I mean, shit. Just come on. Make, make, make it easy for me. I mean, we could have a fucking fight here if you want. I'll kick your ass. Beat you down. Since I'm a shadow being, it's not like you can do to me what you did to Azale. Uh -huh. You can't definitely trap me with shit. It's not gonna work. I'll just mist away and then mist behind you and then punch you in the back of your fucking head. So you're really not gonna give me a choice, man. Like, there's nothing at all I could do that could potentially get me out of this situation now while he's saying you know considering this just talking back and forth and banter i'm reaching in my back pocket for my blessed oil now he might think that the oil is not going to work but right now he's concentrated mist therefore if it splashes on him 
it's probably going to hurt. I've got to find out. I'm not taking any chances. I'm definitely not going to see Satan. I know that dude is mad. I know he's mad. He kicked him in his devil balls a couple of times. Ran through his realm and the devil's hop yard and shit. Defeated his Azel. I mean, he's probably pretty pissed off at me right now. So, as I got my blessed oil out of my back pocket, popped the cap. Razamul was still talking. You know, talking about some of the stuff that he's done and shit. And fucked up things. And bringing pestilence and disease to animals. And killing crops. And stuff like that, you know. Giving some lady crabs. Even though she was like a virgin and shit. She was supposed to get married to like the town elder's son. And then the town elder's son consummated the marriage. And he got crabs. And he was not too pleased with it. Of course... He blamed her, which it was her fault, but it wasn't really her fault. It was Rosamul's fault. And he beat her mercilessly. Beat her badly. I mean, he 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 really beat her bad. You know, and the father found out that she gave his son crabs and, you know, called her an adulteress, had her whipped at the stake. Whip, whip, whip. Public. It was brutal terrible and then forever she was shamed you know what i'm saying they kicked her out of the city little town village whatever it was at the time and she was forced to go off into the woods where she met the wee witches or the witches we and from what i understand they chopped her into little pieces and made a witch's brew out of her and shit it was pretty bad i guess they wanted some seafood since she had crabs i guess they really didn't matter they ate them. I don't know much about what witches eat and shit, so don't get me started. This is just what Azazel told me. Not Azazel, but Rosamund. But anyway, while he's telling me this fucking story, I've got my got my trusty oil in my hand. Splash! I hit him with it, right? He's all fucking upset and shit about it. Because unlike what he said... The shit hurt. It hurt. He's swirling around like a little tornado and shit. Or like this Hasmanian devil. <laughs> Making all types of noise and fucking yelling and screaming at me and shit. It's like, you little son of a bitch. You fucking asshole. I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what I'm, that's what I'm known for. I don't fuck around with you fuckers. I'm here to kill your ass. I pulled out my demon sword. Because, you know, I keep these things with me. You know this. After my previous encounters, I always have my sack of blessed goodies. Just waiting for such things like this. In case they occur. And it did. So, I was prepared. Bam! Whipped out the sword. Started swinging it at him. He kept doing misty shit and, like, dissipating and coming back together. And we're doing this little dance back and forth. Punched me in my face. Oh. Punched me in my face again. Oh. oh, kept hitting me. I was like, shit, fucking bastard. So then I had this bright idea. Rubbed myself down in the oil. So every time he hit me, he would hurt himself. And eventually he stopped hitting me. He's like, you're not going to come quietly, are you? I'm like, no, I'm not fucking coming quietly. I'm not coming with you at all. <laughs> not at all, okay? So how about this? If you stop. And I don't have to kill you because you're kind of okay, except for the shit that you told me that you did, which is really fucked up. But, you know, you being a demon and all, I guess that's not the worst things that I've seen happen. So, uh, I'll give you those LED lights and we can forget about this whole thing. Because, like I said, I'm not using them anyway. You know what I'm saying? But you're not coming to my house and I have to go get them and you can't follow me and all that shit and I'll be back. Okay? I I'll be back. I don't trust you. Of course not. Why would you? I'm human. I'm on the side of good. You're on the side of evil. I don't really trust you either. It was a stalemate, folks. It was a stalemate. He couldn't beat me. I couldn't beat him. He kept doing that misty shit. I couldn't think of a way to defeat him. Although I did have a jar. A blessed jar, of course. You know, If I could get him in the jar, maybe I could trap him until I could figure out a way to kill him. But I would have to trick him into getting in the jar. How was that going to happen? So I thought, hmm, he really wants those LED light strips. He 
keeps bringing it up. So I, I, I tricked him. I said, hey, check this out, right? I have this jar. You get in the jar, okay? You get in the jar. I'll bring you to my house. You can get the lights yourself and then, you know, disappear into the nether realm where you belong. How about that? It's like, I don't know. Why do I have to get in the jar? Why can't I just sit in the car with you? Uh, you know, if I'm driving down the highway and the state troopers see me driving around with a demon in the front seat, they might pull me over and then, you know, we won't get there because trust me, they're just, they're not going to have it. You know, they're not going to have it. It's just, it, it's better this way. It's better this way if you get in the jar. Now, demons are not the smartest creatures in the world. Not all of them. Some of them are pretty smart and some of them are really dumb. This one just so happened to be dumb as fuck. He got in the jar. Closed the cap, smeared the whole thing with blessed oil. So now he's trapped in the jar, right? I'm looking at him. He's yelling and screaming, but I can't hear him through the walls of the jar because, you know, I closed it. So I couldn't hear him. I didn't want to hear him. Now I'm thinking to myself, what can I do to get rid of his ass? Hmm. How can I have some fun with him before I get rid of his ass? Or do I just want to keep him trapped in a jar? I started to notice something, you know. When you have a demon in a jar, it's sort of like a detector of evil, sort of. You know what I'm saying? As I'm moving around the falls, anytime I would get close to evil energy, he'd start vibrating inside the jar. His eyes would glow brighter red. And if I got further away from it, he'd be more still and his eyes would dim and fade. He's like, you're really fucked up for doing this, man. I said, yeah, I know. I am. I tricked you. And I don't feel bad about it. And I have even worse news for you, buddy. I think I'm gonna keep you in this jar for a long time, because why not? You seem to have some kind of detection power and allows me to know when I'm near stuff that I shouldn't be. That'll come in most handy when I'm trying to avoid areas where you people dwell. Well, you demons, not people, because you're not people at all, but you know. It's like, but, uh, wait, hold, hold on, you're going to keep me in this jar. How long are you going to keep me in the jar? I don't know. Until I get tired of keeping you in the jar, perhaps. Or maybe until I die. I mean, you guys live for a very, very long time, unless one of us kills you. So, you don't have too long to wait. I'm 45 now. I mean, you figure I might have another, what, 20 or 30 years left of my life before I cash it in? Not willingly, but, you know, shit. Anything could happen, demon. You know Satan's looking for me and shit, so there's a possibility that he may eventually catch me, and if he does, then you're free, right? So, you know, just get used to being in a jar. Now, I found in my book of books, of my books that have spells, incantations, and shit like that, there was a way that I could bind him to the jar, but at times let him out, but he couldn't go far from the jar. So I did that to him. You know, because I didn't want to have him trapped in the jar the whole entire time. It seemed kind of fucked up and mean, like imprisonment. And I, I don't want to be there. So I wouldn't want to put anybody else there. You know what I'm saying? Even a demon. So binded his essence to this jar. So he was kind of like a genie. He could come out, but he had to go back in. You know, I'd let him out every now and then and shit. We'd have conversations, play spades, watch TV. You know, he'd talk shit about the shows that I like and stuff. Tell me how, you know, we'd watch a lot of like movies with like exorcisms and shit like that. And he would tell me the ones that were actually him. And I'm like, really? So that really happened? He's like, yeah, I really did that. I mean, of course, you know, Hollywood fucked it all up and shit and made it seem more glorious. Like, you know, good always wins. And trust me, that's not how it ended. That's not how it ended. You know, she didn't just like jump up and down and smack the priest around and shit. I made her tear the priest's head off. 
right off his shoulders. They didn't want to say anything about that because they wanted you to believe that good conquers all. And I don't know why it's working for you, but, you know, whatever. At least I can watch some TV and shit. My powers are fading, though. They're fading. You know, I have to do evil stuff. So the last person that told me they had to do stuff in order to, like, live was the Grinch. And I don't like that guy. Oh, you know the Grinch? Knew the Grinch. What do you mean you knew the Grinch? I killed him. He's actually part of my uh, hot sauce collection. I turned him and his little Cindy Lou Who friend into hot sauce not too long ago. Really? Yes, really, I did. But that's not what. Why are we talking about the Grinch? I mean, what do you know about the Grinch? Oh, I'll tell you, you know, what? A long time ago, when the Grinch was actually a pretty cool guy, you know, I possessed his little girlfriend, Cindy Lou Who, and got her to tell him to do this and that and the other, and then he became evil, and then I got her to tell him to be good, and then he became good, and then he lost everything he had. You know, it was just a back and forth, twisty, turny shit. And then he became really fucked up, and he got possessed. And somehow, because he's a Grinch and not a human, the possession took in a way that was different. Him and the demon that he was possessed by ended up merging and becoming one soul and somehow his meanness took over and he just ended up with the powers of a demon but still being the Grinch. Hmm. That's an interesting backstory. It's an interesting backstory. Well he's gone now. Like I said he's hot sauce and as far as I know that's the end of him. I won't be seeing him anymore. And I'm glad because he was an asshole. Yeah, he was. He was definitely an asshole. <laughs> a fucking douchebag and a half. All right, Rosamul, you know what time it is. It's time to get back in the jar. It's been nice talking to you. I do enjoy hanging out with you, you know. It's too bad you're a fucking demon and eventually I'll either have to destroy you or you'll try to destroy me. You know, if you could stop doing evil stuff, then, you know, there'd be a chance that we could actually be friends. Ah, friends. There's no such thing as friends in the demon world. Just pray. Uh-huh, yeah. Get back in the jar, or I'll make you get back in the jar. And he went back in the jar, and he sat in there, and he, I guess, went into demon sleep, or whatever demons do when they're not doing demon shit. I sat there for a little while, thinking about my trip to the falls, seeing... What really happened to the poor young lady was really this asshole Rosamond. And, you know, seeing the two Native Americans together in love eternally was a nice, heartwarming experience. I mean, I got my ass kicked a little bit by this damn demon, but it wasn't the worst thing that I've ever had happen to me, you know. My phone rang. I picked it up. Hello? You know who this is? No, actually I don't. The caller ID said unknown. I don't even know why I answered the fucking phone. Who is this? It's Satan. Oh, fuck. Where's Razamul? He's in a jar. On my uh, shelf. I captured him when I was exploring Nineveh Falls. No, he's not coming back. And I'm not... I, why am I even talking to you, damn it? All you want to do is do fucked up shit to me. And quite frankly, sir, asshole, I don't have much to say to you. Ah, uh, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll call a truce, I'll call a truce. A truce? A truce, you say, cease fire? No more demons coming after me and shit? No more demons coming after you and shit. I overheard you was telling Rosamond that you have some LED light strips that um you're not using. Yeah, I do. What of it? Why don't you uh let me have them? I'm trying to make a party room in hell here, and um my Amazon account has been suspended because you know every time they deliver shit, I kind of wait for the delivery people to come and then I do fucked up shit to them and stuff so they won't deliver stuff to my house anymore in hell um so I'll 
grant you six months of peace and quiet for two light strips. Two light strips, six months. So it's basically three months per light strip. I don't know, Satan. I don't know. I don't like making deals with the devil. Here's what I'll do, right? Instead of making a deal with you, I'll give you the two light strips, right? And in return, I expect to be left alone for six months. But that's just what I said. Yes, but if I accept it the way you say it, then it's a deal with you. I'm telling you what I'm going to do and the way I'm going to do it. So therefore, it's no deal. It's me declaring what I'm going to do and what I expect from you. No deal. Because I know you never keep your fucking word anyway, you lying sack of fucking red shit. Hey, you know, I could just come there and fuck you up real quick and shit. I know you've got your blessed stuff. It's the only reason why I haven't been there. I don't feel like getting burned with blessed oil and all that other shit. So, I'll accept your... Nah, don't even say it. Don't even say it. I'll just fucking drop off the damn... Now I can just reach through and, and grab them. None of that traveling shit. You know, I can just tear a dimensional rift right in your living room there and grab it and, you know, we can go on about our very way. Now, of course, just to be an ass, I splashed a little bit of blessed oil on the light strip. So then when he grabbed it, he burnt his hand. And that's exactly what he did. He stuck his hand through the portal, gave him the light strip. Ah! Ah! He disappeared and went away. Called me back and told me how fucked up that was for me to, you know, give him blessed oil light strips. I asked him what they were working out for him. He said, yeah, but, you know, that still was kind of fucked up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucked up. I'm a fucked up type of guy. When it comes to y'all. Anyway, folks. Rest of the night was a normal, regular, plain old night. I went to sleep. Woke up the next day. Ate breakfast. Sausages and eggs, bacon, pancakes, toast, with butter, not margarine, butter, a little bit of jelly on them, mm. just the right amount of crunchy and soft, you know what I'm saying, where the edges are nice and crispy, but it's not hard all the way through, it's still got that little bit of softness, especially when you put the butter on it. Mm. <laughs> and I got ready for my day, which was relatively boring. I didn't have anything planned. You know what I'm saying? It was just another day like any other day.